tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise. Aloha, I'm Patrick Ching and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we learn about the Pacific Golden Plover known as Kolea. I'll show you how to draw the Kolea and then we'll join Kolea painting classes on Kauai at the Kauai Koa Farm and on Oahu at the Waikiki Aquarium. Enjoy all this and more on a far-flying episode of Painting in Paradise! <laughs> Hawaii is home to a number of migratory birds that spend most of their time in Hawaii and fly long distances or migrate to places where they mate, nest, and raise their chicks. Migratory species include the wandering tattler or ulili, the ruddy turnstones or akekeke, the sanderlings called hunakai, and the bristle-thighed curlew called kiowea, which are probably named for the call that they make. The Pacific Golden Plover, or kolea, is a migratory bird that spends its winter months in Hawaii and its summer months in Alaska. They usually start arriving in Hawaii in mid-August and they are territorial birds that usually return to the same place they've inhabited in previous years. The kolea feed in and defend their turf, which provides them with sources of food including insects and worms. In April, the male kolea start to sport their breeding plumage, which is sometimes referred to as their tuxedos. They gain weight in preparation for their long migration to Alaska, which may take them three or four days of non-stop flying. Now let's see how Scott Lee of the Honolulu Zoo describes their migration to Alaska. If you live anywhere near a park or a lawn here in Hawaii, chances are you've seen this little bird skittering around. These are kolea, or Pacific Golden Plovers, a very special species that only spends part of its time here in the Hawaiian Islands. In fact, take a good look. You might notice that on some of them, their fronts are getting darker and darker. These are the males, and they're growing their mating plumage. Near the end of April, most of these birds will gather together into a flock, and then they're out of here. Imagine flying nonstop over the ocean. No breakfast, no lunch, no dinner, not even time to sleep unless you want to crash into the water. Next day, you keep going. No breakfast, no lunch, no dinner, no sleep, no breakfast, no lunch, no dinner, no sleep. And then if you're lucky on day three, you might finally see your mating grounds up ahead in Alaska. The kolea can fly three to four days nonstop to reach their mating grounds. And that's a journey of about 3,000 miles. When we return, I'll show you how to draw the kolea. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing the kolea. So the first thing I'm going to do when I draw my kolea is just give it a little shape, kind of like a sideways teardrop for the body, okay? Just like that. And then I'm going to place the head with a circle right around here. Okay, remember to press softly, softly cuz if we press softly, softly we can either erase or adjust these lines, yeah? Next, I'm going to give it a little bit of a beak right there. And the neck. I give him a little bit of a lump over there, maybe where a leg might show up. And speaking of legs, I'll just make them kind of like thin, you know, little circle where that bend goes and that one's almost all the way straight down but the other one I'm gonna put it back a little bit I'm gonna have it like 
back here. In fact, it's probably the leg that's farther behind. And I'll angle it, you know, just like that with the foot going to be right around there. Now in the back of this point, there's usually like three points and two of them are wings. Yeah, so we'll have the tail and we'll also give them like a couple of pointed wings, okay? Just pretty thin like that. And there I got my basic shape of a colea. Now I can put like a grass, you know, jugga jugga's right there for the grass. I might even put something like a mountain, you know, yeah, something like that, you know, some clouds maybe. The next thing I'm gonna do is place the maka, the eye. Yeah, and the eye goes right about where the eye is supposed to go. So we'll put that eye right around here. Now when they're getting ready to fly away, the kolea will have their breeding plumage on the male's wheel, kind of like what we call the tuxedo, you know? And this little black part in the chest goes right above the eye like that. And it's kind of like in an S shape here, comes down and right around there. Now right above that S shape where the black is, it's gonna be kind of like a white uh, racing stripe, you know? And that's gonna start up here and come down here and kind of fizzle off back here. And of course above that is gonna have the speckled golden colors, which give it its common name of Pacific Golden Plover. Yeah, so now that I got my colea drawn out over there, I'll take that, use it as my guide I'll get a bigger pen so you can see it more clearly, okay? So now that I got my colea formed up, I'm going to outline it with a little thicker pen. And I'll go around the shape of the beak here. Little bumpier bulbous head. Swooping the top of the head to the top of the body. Give it a couple little points like that. And the tail. Oh, yeah. Little lump right there where that leg's going to come out and right back to where we started. Next, I'll put the circle for the maka or the eye. I tell you what, I'll leave a little glimmer, a little sparkle of light in that eye. Give him a little character, yeah? And the beak. I'll put a little line in there in between the upper and lower beak and a little dot where the nostril goes. Now to tell people where the black section goes on those males, right above the eye, right around there. Okay, the white section is right above it, little racing stripe, and there, one leg's kind of hanging up in the air and the other one's in the bushes over there. Give them a little jagga jagga for the grass. Oh. Now from here, we can start to go and maybe define a couple of those wings, you know. Tell the viewer which one is in front, which one's in back, and actually which one is actually more of the tail. When drawing the spots on the Kalea's back, I might have a bunch of speckled black and gold and white hearts over there. I'm going to stop yakking and I'm going to shade this bird, okay? And maybe you can put one out there flying somewhere too, okay? And there you have a Kaleo. <laughs> and don't forget your signature. When we return, we'll join a Kaleo painting class at the Waikiki Aquarium. For art, gifts, and lessons, visit patrickcheng.com. One of my favorite places to visit on Oahu is the Waikiki Aquarium. 
There's so much to learn here about the ocean and its inhabitants. The Pacific Golden Plover also likes to visit the lawns of the aquarium, and that's where we're having our Kolea painting class on Oahu. I've always um, followed Patrick from a young man and been impressed with his paintings. I took a class from Patrick Ching 20 years ago. I loved it, but I've been working so much since then, um, and I really need to get back to art. I've been away in Florida for quite a few years, and so once I got back home after COVID, I watch Painting in Paradise, and I always enjoy that show. And I saw that there was this class about the Colea bird. I called my friend and I said, do you want to go to the aquarium and paint? And so we ended up here and I'm looking forward to it. Today is going to be my first day meeting Patrick. I don't do any painting at all. I would love to be able to learn, but I'm not good in drawing. So I'm hoping to get a lot of help from him today. <laughs> so thank you for joining us at the Waikiki Aquarium for the Kolea painting class. We're gonna be working with acrylic paints over here. Orange. You mix that, you get orange. And blue and red is a little trickier, but you get purple. purple, right. So right here is called a color wheel. Now, when you have a color that's, maybe it's too intense, this green is just too bright. You can always add its opposite to it, and it tones it down. This information we just went over right now, it applies to this ocean, this sky, the field of grass, almost everything. We'll paint the farthest things away first. I'm gonna start two piles of paint. One is gonna be the lower sky, and one's gonna be the upper sky. I then proceeded to take the class through my process of building paintings. And I kind of go about a painting like an engineer or a construction guy, you know. Um, I put the foundation first, and if your foundation is solid, then your framework goes on nicely, and your finish work is all fun and good and lasts a long time. It's a beautiful day when you're greeted in the Hawaiian. Soon we were all in the flow of painting and it was a beautiful day indeed. But it's a beautiful day here in Hawaii. Hey, it's a beautiful day when you greet it in the Hawaiian way. It's a beautiful day here in Hawaii. It's a beautiful day. At the end is when we added the details. I call it the candy.
my Kalea that I painted today and it was so much fun. The setting is so beautiful and it was such an easygoing type of atmosphere that it was so much fun and it is so nice to take something home that you can feel proud of. This is my first painting and I am so proud of myself. I think I did a very good job. This is my first painting of a bird. For four hours, I'm happy with it. I probably am gonna tweak it when I get home, but that's okay because for now, I'm happy. Thank you. I'm very happy with my painting. It's always a joy to paint with Patrick because he's always so positive. When we return, we'll join the Kolea painting class on Kauai at Kauai Koa Farm. Now we'll head to the north shore of Kauai for a Kolea painting party at Kauai Koa Farm. Here's how you get there. You go straight for the chicken. I think the chicken only get one leg. You pass the chicken, you keep going to the minor bird, okay? Might have two minor birds and a metal lark. Okay, you pass the metal lark and you come to... Here, native Hawaiian koa seedlings are grown into large koa trees. With several resident kolea on the farm, it is such a beautiful setting for painting. Renowned wildlife photographer Hob Osterlund is among the painters and she shares her photos and knowledge of the kolea with us. They live here year-round uh, from, from August to April. And then in April, the boys and the girls all get dressed up. The boys get dressed up the most. They get a full-on tuxedo on. The girls get a little darker than their normal coloring. And if you look closely, the background, the golden marks in the back look like hearts. I asked Tom what made her want to paint today. I've never picked up a paintbrush in my life. I'm not a painter. I'm a photographer. That's my medium. That's what I'm really comfortable with. So I thought I'd chance them. Hello, my name is Rhea McCarris. I'm a singer-songwriter, an artist, a creator, and a lover. <laughs> so we're gonna paint today, I'm excited. Hi, my name is Kelly Morgan. Um, I'm an acrylic painter. Pat inspired me to start painting and doing art at a very young age. I'd like to incorporate my abstract creature art into a realistic habitat um, to make fun art. Now it was time to start painting, so I started the class with a little pep talk. We got four hours, but we only got four hours. <laughs> we started off with the farthest things away in our paintings, the sky. It's your gentle breeze, sets my mind and at ease. Right outside, the curious Kolea was keeping an eye on us. A rock in the middle of the ocean wide, a koa farm on the Mauka side, pink and orange clouds up in the sky bring tears of joy to my eyes. Next, we got our backgrounds covered with paint. A gecko chirps her hello to you, a swirling in the anini stream. Then we start painting the stars of our show, the Kolea. Saw a 
the mountains and uh, laid out the beach and filled in the bird and added the candy that calls it um, and yeah basically worked on the details with feathers and kind of got creative with them i loved learning about the background versus the foreground i put he manu in there which makes me happy pink and orange clouds in the sky and a koa tree in honor of the kawaii koa fong i've never picked up a paintbrush before, so I'm very happy. I love these birds, so I wanted it to reflect who they are. This is from a photograph that mm -hmm. I took several years ago when I was following one around and I saw it catch a worm. The worm was holding on for dear life into the soil and then eventually snapped the cole in the face and tried to make a run for it. Thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. I hope you enjoyed learning about Hawaii's Pacific golden plover called the colea. I'd love to see what you did, so why don't you send pictures of you and your art to my website at patrickching.com. <laughs> Aloha. You can watch more Painting in Paradise episodes and learn about art, nature, and Hawaii on my Patrick Ching YouTube channel. Finally see your mating grounds up ahead in Alaska.